Okay, heart disease. Uh, this is near and dear to my heart because my great-grandfather, my grandfather, my father, my brother, all have had serious heart disease, like heart attacks, coronary bypasses, stents, the whole deal. Okay, so there is a genetic component to getting heart disease. Uh, but there's a lot of things that can be done if a person knows that they have a propensity to it to not get it. Um, and, and that's what we're about. So we know that heart disease, where the arteries of the heart, so the heart is a muscle, and there are three main arteries that feed the heart muscle. When someone has a heart attack, what happens is those, one of those arteries or more block up. It causes a clot and then the heart can't get blood, and then the part of the muscle dies, and that's what a heart attack is. Now, we know that the basic cause of the artery inflammation, of the artery blocking, is actually inflammation. And that inflammation can be caused by several different things. One of them are bacteria, oftentimes associated with bacteria in pockets in the teeth, or root canal teeth, or bad bacteria growing in the intestine. They can leave these areas, they can go into the artery wall, they can cause infection and inflammation. The body then, in response to that inflammation, uses cholesterol to make a coating over that injured area. It narrows the artery, and then the artery is more susceptible to being blocked. Often when this is going on, the blood itself is inflamed. And when it's inflamed, it will clot much easier. So this adds to it. Often people like this have an imbalance of their essential fatty acids, which make their blood a little bit thick. They don't have enough omega-3 fats. Oftentimes also these people are deficient in minerals like magnesium. And when there's not enough magnesium, the arteries in the heart are gonna be spasm. They're gonna be a little narrower. So we get this sort of, this, this conglomeration of forces where the vessels are a little tight, the blood's a little thick, the blood's inflamed, there's a bacteria there, the person just ate a meal that had a lot of, of thickness to it, and then they get a heart attack. One of the other biggest causes of inflammation is insulin. And so people who are on a diet where the carbohydrate level's too high, their insulin levels go up, their blood sugar levels go up, this also produces inflammation in arteries. So again, our approach is we can undo this. And a lot of times using strategies like chelation, which can remove the calcium from the artery and open it up. And another therapy called EECP. This is a table where the patient gets on the table and it produces some increased pressure in their heart arteries. It actually causes the body to grow new blood vessels around where the blockage is. And we've had marvelous success with this. Uh, this is an FDA-approved treatment, and it really works. Uh, almost everybody we've treated, if they have chest pain or they have chest pain with walking, once they've been on the treatment for about 17 or 18 times, the total treatment is 35, usually their symptoms go away. It often works for leg cramps, too, if the problem is blocked arteries. Uh, we work with their nutrition. We do mineral replacement. And so we have these things uh, where we can start to get this process reversed, and so the person can go back to an active life and avoid, hopefully, emergency surgery where they have bypasses and stents and the rest of it. Sometimes those are life-saving procedures, but often if we can get a person early enough, and, and if we have a person who's got a family history, we can look at markers in their blood that show this process is already going on. Uh, they have markers for inflammation. Uh, and for other things that predispose them to heart disease, and these can be treated so we can avoid this. So heart disease is reversible. Don't wait till your first heart attack. Uh, if you have a family history or if you're having symptoms now, come in. We can help.